Same time, special guest with us, Coach Stratton, if you will do the honors for us. Well, they tell me the mellow tones of Grip and Rip, <laughs> the man with the, the greatest podcast in North America. If you need a great story written, I mean, you talk about a guy with a full toolbox, Ransberger is online. <laughs> That is the greatest introduction I've heard yet. Does that fit the bill, Ranch? <laughs> well, Ned and, and Coach Strat, I don't know how I'm supposed to go on and say anything profound or entertaining after an introduction <laughs> like that. It's all going to be downhill from here, I'm afraid. <laughs> that's beautiful. That's, that, what a, that's a great comeback, Ranch. <laughs> well, once in a while. Very good. Uh, uh, Rance, of course, is editor of the Christian County Headliner, and uh, which is, having been a former resident of Christian County, a very big deal. Oh, that's a, I love that. I love that. What day, What specifically do you take as your duties? Being the being the uh, editor, but you're overseeing <laughs> everything. But what what do you like to do? Sure, I'm I'm the news editor there, so that means I do a little bit of everything. You know, um, just because of a lot of things that have happened in the newspaper industry, and then. Uh, just in the climate here in Christian County, we're down to a staff of three people. It's myself, and then we have our sports editor, Pat Daly, who does all of the sports writing and, and does a tremendous job like that. He was actually uh, just won an award from the Missouri Press Association as best in class for sports pages, which is kind of like it's the equivalent of a newspaper winning the state championship in sports coverage, basically. So thankfully i don't have to do a lot of bossing around when it comes to pat because he does a great job but then i do everything else uh, i cover government i'm covering a lot of health related things right now as you might imagine uh, i cover crime and then when i have time i cover feature stories i write some columns and uh try to mix in a little bit of uh of feel good in there uh, as as we can do it but um you know, it's it's a pretty well a, a nonstop job. You know, managing the weekly newspaper and then continuously keeping our website going as well at ccheadliner.com. Hey, Ranch, I'm going to ask you a key question. I'm a former resident down in Christian County, and mm-hmm. it was last Monday, one week ago. Um, yeah, one week ago yesterday, last Monday, the new bridge which opened, which is on my property or my former property, the Spencers own it now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm assuming that you were there with the headliner to cover that. I was, yeah. The new Riverside Bridge is open, so uh, we've got an issue that hits stands. It'll actually uh, come out in some stores tonight, but it'll be in mailboxes and on newsstands everywhere tomorrow morning. You can read the story about the brand-new Riverside Bridge. You can see some photos from the grand opening and and hear uh, exactly what the stakeholders had to say about that project. It's been something... As you well know, Ned, years and years in the making, but uh, that's, that's a pretty big deal and a, a pretty interesting piece of history, but it's just transpired for us. What was your uh, reaction, and I know we'll, we'll get to sports in a second, your reaction at seeing this bridge and, and, and knowing fully well what it looked like prior to that? Um, you, know, you know, it was just, I, I never thought I would see a day where a vehicle actually crossed the Finley River there on Riverside Road and and did it safely. You know, it had been something that was talked about for a very long time. So, you know, just as someone who lives here in Ozark, it was really cool to see that happen. And then, um, you know, of course, I you know, I took photographs of the event that day, but then I uh, went back later in the week. You know, I'm, a, I'm an avid runner, so I went for a run and, and tested out the new pedestrian and the bike lane there and, and just kind of enjoyed that area uh, along the Finley River and it's beautiful. That's going to be hopefully something to uh, to build around and just to make that part of Ozark a, a destination for, for transit or just for a little bit of recreation. And it isn't too very far away from uh, the Duck Stadium, uh, which is what we Oh, the old timers call us now. What, U, U.S. Ballpark Stadium? is It's it? U.S. Baseball Park. There we go, right there. Uh, so, yeah, the access to it is quite a bit uh, easier than that. Tell the folks a little bit about what Ransberger does with the with the whole baseball program, which is really burgeoning. Sure. So I work for the Grip and Rip Baseball League, which is uh, founded in 2016 by Tony Lewis, and it's uh, men's baseball. All of our We have six teams, and so if you don't know any of the players out there, that's okay. You can choose your favorite team based on where you live. You know, it kind of harkens back to a time where towns had teams. You know, it it was the subject of uh, a discussion between 
Archie Graham and Ray Kinsella in Field of Dreams. So if you live in Ozark, you root for the Ozark Mountain Ducks. If you live in Nixa, you root for the Nixa Suckers. If you live in <laughs> North Springfield, you're a Moon City Mavericks fan. Uh, so we've got six teams in the league. Um, I am the play-by-play announcer. All of our games are streamed uh, live and free via the Internet. So if you cannot make it to Ozark and pay them easily $5 to get in, you can still enjoy grip and rip baseball wherever you are in the world. And we're really excited. We've got a lot uh, on the horizon as far as ramping up our live game day coverage. And, you know, we're pumped for our 2021 season already. I mean, we just wrapped up the 2020 season in which the Ozark Mountain Ducks won the title. But we're already making plans for 2021. That's just how excited <laughs> hey, the we Ducks, are. The Ducks made it. I mean, they, it's deja vu all over again. <laughs> well, the, these Ducks actually won, and these Ducks are going to stick around. You know, that's after <laughs> there you been, go. it had been 16 yeah, I know Tony years. And, uh, uh, go ahead. Yeah, Tony and Harrison were out yesterday you know, doing some additional filming pictures and stuff. So I, knowing Tony as I do, I'm sure something is percolating for sure. So, Well, that's the thing about um, just, you know, Tony Lewis from the founder on down through, you know, the staff and, and the managers and the players in this league. You know, it's a, it's a real-life field of dreams. All of our players, or, or most of them, rather, were college baseball players, but some did not play beyond high school. But they've found this little piece of heaven here in the Ozarks where they can continue their baseball careers. So if it's worth doing, it's worth overdoing. And, uh, and we, we take it pretty seriously. We have a lot of fun, uh, but make no mistake about it. It's, it's not old man baseball. It's not a bunch of guys who never had a prime. Like, these guys can really play. Um, you know, yeah, I have uh, never I have never mentioned that it's the Beer and Nuts League. No, they, pl- they play. <laughs> I mean, it's a it's a very competitive league. Uh, it, I mean, it's it's fun to watch. It really is. When do you start the season? Uh, so we'll have tryouts in July, and then uh, knock on wood, and you know, global pandemic and all that. Um, the hope is that the first games of 2021 will be in early August, and we'll go August, September, October. It's usually uh, these teams just play one day a week, so they'll either play. Friday night under the lights, or they'll be part of the GRBL Sunday doubleheader. It's a seven-week regular season, and then we have playoffs and eventually crown a champion, and that ends with uh, the presentation of the Howard Bell Trophy and a big old shower of champagne. Well, speaking of that, uh, I would assume, and I hope anyway, that the battle for Bell is uh, back on. Well, if, if uh, both entities agree... Uh, administratively, we'll, we'll, it will be back. There's no question about that. I don't think that's ever going to go away. I would hope At not. least not while the current people are involved. I just don't. I don't see that going away. He was such a such a great proponent of baseball. My, my grandson, he was coach there, but, my, but right. it was more uh, Coach Snodgrass who had taken right. over the team by then. But uh, really had a lot of respect for the oh, guy. Yeah. And uh, just one just of the all time great guys. Good Howard person. Bell. No a question. Good person. Rance, when you uh, take a look at the entire scene down in Christian County, and it is an all, you know, all encompassing scene. You've got more football now. It used to be just Ozark and Nixa. Now you have Clever playing, and uh, you have all sorts of opportunities to have some pretty good football. What were your first impressions of, of Clever playing the, really, in a sense, the uh, first year of varsity football? Yeah, I mean, for for being what it was, I think that was uh, it was a tremendous addition. Um, you know, I'm always always, always a proponent of a school adding rather than subtracting sports. And um, I just happen to know firsthand what a difference it can make when a school has an athletic program and just provides uh, some kind of add-on, some kind of incentive for young people to want to take their academics seriously. And, you know, more than that, just be part of something and understand what working together uh, as a team can do. So... I think that clever program's in the right in the right direction. I think uh, you know a lot of, of folks who just were not accustomed to having high school football thought they would come out and beat everybody ninety to nothing right out of the gate, but that's just not how program building works. So they learned a few lessons, and then you know were able to to get some victories in that first year of varsity football. And it's going to be really neat to watch those kids uh, learn and grow, and and watch. The program grow as clever embraces having a football team. So, uh, Rance, now with the uh, 
uh, movement to Coach Perry and and his effect on uh, on Nick's that you want to share a little bit about how that uh, affected the community there in Nixon? Well, you know, Nixa football has always been uh, a big deal, as is Ozark, of course. But, um, you know, what it really impressed me with Coach Perry was um, not just the fact that they were able to win games. You know, they went 9-3 and three and, and just uh, lost a tough one on the road up at Ray Peck. But um, I was impressed with how John Perry came into Nixa High School and sort of talking about building the culture of his program straight away. Um, I'm always impressed with, with coaches who can do that. And, um, you know, I, he, he said the right things, and then you could tell it was also backed up with just uh, the way his team handled some of the adversity it was dealt, both with injuries, with, you know, going through playing football in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic. And uh, it was really neat to see people get behind a mix of football. There was a, a, a new kind of wholesomeness that had not been there before. So um, it's going to be really neat to see, you know, same, same similar, I guess, with the situation with Clever to see, you know, what can he do uh, as his tenure in Nixa goes on? Was it beginner's luck or, or has, you know, some real positive change been affected there? You know, it's a very good point that you bring up, too. In, in, you're an old, and I don't mean old chronologically, but... I'm old enough. <laughs> Springfield news leader, and you covered all the, the teams, and you saw some downtrodden years and so forth and so on. Nix's football team under Coach Perry, we had the opportunity to do three of them on the uh, radio up here. So we saw the, the McCracken when he came in, then we... We saw Ramon Green really excel. These guys are only sophomores, for heaven's sake. That's that's a young, and in my opinion, you correct me if you think differently, but that's that's a young and improving program. Yeah, I've been really impressed with Ramon Green in particular. Um, it's it's going to be really interesting to see you know what he can do as he develops, and of course, uh, you know he's he's going to lose the element of surprise that he wants help, but. Um, <laughs> That's all right. I think he'll figure it out. And uh, as you know, Ned, the COC is always a really tough conference to play in. There's there's no such thing as a walkover in that league, in any sport, really. So, um, yeah, the, the, the young nucleus is, is going to hold up. These are some kids who got some good playoff experience and some good big game experience here in 2020. So it's only going to gonna benefit them going forward. Well, and based on what I've been told, I think even the uh, the levels underneath the uh, JV team, freshmen, and down to their eighth grade teams all dominated at their level. So I would think going forward, as those kids get acclimated uh, to what they're doing down there at Rance, that, that should bode well for them. Sure. I, t- I try never to get too wrapped up into what, you know, the seventh grade or the eighth grade team is, you know, if, if they're playing well or, or if they've, they've got some cool things going on, great. But, uh, you know, as you know, Coach Stratton, uh, growth spurts happen to different kids at, at different Absolutely. levels. And so, uh, you know, junior high ball is about learning the game, first and foremost. It's about, you know, molding young minds to uh, want to buy into things like uh, teamwork and, and putting – uh, you know, organization and team over self. So, you know, your, your wins and losses are, are nice, but it's, it's really more about teaching at that level. And so uh, it sounds like they're doing a fair bit of that at Nixa. Um, and so that's, that's exciting to see. It was, and, and uh, when they played Ray Moore Peculiar, too, is such a close game, really a chance to win the thing. Uh, I thought this is very significant because Ray Peck has a, a good program. I, I really feel like this is a team, the Nixa team, uh, certainly on the rise and playing well. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear you say that about the, the teamwork. To, you know, Rance, I'm an old-timer, and I, I kind of blame our profession a little bit for maybe some of the changes in attitudes from the players who kind of look more to themselves because we glorify them. We in the media glorify individual performances, and that – that can be a negative in a lot of respects, too, especially games where there is team elements involved. Would you agree with that, Mark? Well, it's the Dick Vitale effect. Ex- I mean, exactly. Well, exactly. you know, uh, when good, bad, or indifferent, Dickie V made it about individual kids and 
all that stuff. I mean, it's just a transition that we've gone to. And you look at all the other things over the last 20 years, we've gone from really an unbelievable, super competitive with a level playing field American Legion program, state of Missouri, down to where they don't even play anymore nope. because, it, you know, moving talented kids all onto one team, you know, all those things. It is what it is, and that's what has happened. I, I, uh, I like the thing, especially in football, during the summer, they're they're actually playing seven on seven, but they all stay. Those are all their own school kids. I think that's a major plus for football going forward. Not so much for the other sports, but for football, I think they still maintain a little bit of continuity there. Rance, uh, from your days when you were the uh, news leader, do you uh, see a, a positive change in the level of athletics in this part of the country? Oh, for sure. Um, you know, I'm I'm kind of like Coach Stratton, I guess. I'm a little bit concerned with, um, you know, the emphasis that gets placed on winning at levels where the emphasis should maybe be placed a little more on teaching. Like, but that, that's not something that's really new. I think it's just it's getting worse and worse as the years go on. I mean, I can remember, you know, when I was in high school, um, I was a bench player on what was a pretty good freshman football team but uh, you know even then with the way our locker room culture was some of the guys that were seniors on the varsity team would would tell the ninth grade players man if you're not starting as a ninth grader you know don't even worry about coming out next year because you're you've really got no chance and you know what is that really teaching people you know Uh, sports are supposed to be at some level about uh, building character and and imparting life lessons that can be used when all of us have to have to turn professional in something else, you know, um, that's one thing that that's one of the reasons I really like my my job. I say my job; it's it's more of a hobby. But my job with the Grip and Rip Baseball League is because uh, all of our players we've got ninety guys, and all of them are professionals in something else. You know, they're out there playing baseball each weekend because they love to do it. They're not they're not making a bunch of money doing it. Heaven knows I'm not making a bunch of money doing it. It's just a bunch of guys who believe in one common cause and want to go out and, and have some fun together and be competitive. And that's what it is. But, you know, for some kids and, and for some parents especially, it's about, well, um, you know, how can I make sure that we're winning everything forever and how much money is it going to cost me in order to do it? That's a really good summation that you just made, and and it does require a change in mindset that has evolved over the years, in my opinion, because you have seen the time, I'm old enough that they can remember, when the competition was really the key, but now it's what you're going to gain. Uh, Do I get a scholarship? Do I get a big contract? And uh, that, in a sense, kind of subtracts a little bit from the, at least it does in my case, a little bit from the interest of the game because it's there to be played, there to be enjoyed, and the competitive aspect is what we're, uh, what we're all about. Okay, enough of the uh, philosophical approach now. Uh, you guys are getting into, <laughs> getting into basketball now. Uh, are there, I assume there are jamborees all set for the prep teams? Yeah, the Ozark Tigers, matter of fact, have a jamboree going tonight. They're going to host Hillcrest and Spokane this evening at Ozark High School. So I'm uh, I'm pretty pumped up to see what Mark Schweitzer and the Ozark Tigers are going to have this year, and and this is kind of our chance to get a first look at those guys. Um, you know, Ned, uh, we're we're about like anybody else. We're we're watching the schedule and listening for public health announcements, and and you know. <laughs> Just kind of uh, understanding that everything's written in pencil and not in ink pen, uh, but right. you know, we're, <laughs> we're we're very hopeful that everyone is going to be able to play uh, as many games as they possibly can in a safe manner, and uh, that you know, the bottom line is that the kids are going to get to play and and have some fun doing it. And there is the key right there. I'm glad you said that, Rance. Uh, explain to the audience very quickly how the basketball jamborees work. Uh, it's just a set of scrimmages, so they um, it, it depends on just whatever the coaches agree to. I think in the case of the Ozark Jamboree, they've got it broken up into 30-minute sessions. So Hillcrest will play Ozark, then Hillcrest will play Spokane, and then Spokane will play Ozark to kind of wrap up the night, and then everybody gets on the bus to go home. You know, they'll they'll have the game clock going and the scoreboard going just to simulate some some real life basketball situations, but. Uh, it's more about just getting some of those kids and some of whom who have 
not ever seen varsity level competition before a, a little dress rehearsal to kind of get their feet wet as they gear up and get into season these kids and and the games i assume are uh, fully officiated i would assume yes i oh, mean yeah they'll be a, yeah i guess be, we'll figure it out when a ref like a goes game. on the floor <laughs> yeah, yeah usually the referees need to tune up as well. That's uh, something that, that gets a little overlooked. But Some uh, of them I know definitely need to tune up. <laughs> very good. Very, very good. Rance, tell the folks a little bit about yourself, how you got involved in journalism. Oh, gosh, how long do we have? So, um, yeah, I, I, was, I went to University of Missouri, Columbia. I have a degree in broadcast journalism. Uh, my first job out of school was at Lake of the Ozarks at a radio station there. Um, started out doing news, always kind of harbored an interest in sports as well, and was able to cross over doing Candace and Lakers football on the radio. Um, worked at the radio station for three years, got laid off, went to work at the newspaper in Candace did that for a little bit. And then I got hired uh, to make the move to Ozark uh, started out with the news leader organization, uh, was the editor of their Christian County product for a couple of years. Then uh, Matt Shook left the Springfield news leader, creating an opening in the high school sports uh, reporter spot. So I uh, threw my hat in the ring for that, interviewed and got that job. I had that job for about three years, and I, I got to a point in... 2017 where I needed to make a change so uh, I asked for and was granted my release at that time and then uh, for a while I was out of the business altogether other than I had a couple of freelancing jobs with the Kansas City Star and then I uh, went to work here at the Christian County Headliner in May of 2018 and I've been there ever since. A whole two years now with the Headliner yeah, that's, that's yeah. pretty good. I, I it's, know it's what, been a journeyman's head. career. You see, they're, they're, when when Shook, and I know you had to think this too, when Shook left the uh, Springfield News Leader, I think it was for a job in the Virgin Islands. That's correct. He it was. was. It Islands. was. And Ransberger said, well, hell, if he's going there, so am I. <laughs> and that, now he's in the Motor City now. <laughs> yeah, he is. He is up in the We had him on the air uh, two two or three weeks ago. Oh, yeah. And uh, he's, Character. he's living life up there to the fullest. Did uh, when, when you got the job at the News Leader, uh, what was your what was your overall mindset? What were your goals upon uh, undertaking that position? Well, so I started out. I was just looking for uh, a way to be geographically closer to Springfield. Ned, there's this, it wasn't just a career move. There's a little bit of a love story going on in the background as uh, well. Uh, so uh. it was it was getting serious with a beautiful young nurse who happened to reside in Ozark. So. I gave up my my sweet sweet lake house, my bachelor pad, and uh, and came down to Ozark and uh, and went to work, and then uh, went to work on the relationship as well. Uh, ended up marrying the girl, my beautiful wife Ashley. So that part uh, worked out tremendously, and uh, I was <laughs> was able to have a really good time. You know, I was at the News Leader for a total of five years. I still have a lot of friends that work there. There's no, I don't harbor any kind of ill will toward the people there or that organization. Um, yeah, I really cherished my time there. Uh, it just reached a point where, uh, I needed to make a move on. So, um, you know, I still read the news leader. I'm still a big fan of, of my guy, Wyatt Wheeler and, and support what he does. So, um, everything is, is good in that arena. It was just time for me to make a move. And you know, he, well, you certainly know this, that why it's part of our, uh, part of our little network here too. He's oh, of course. Uh, with Arthur. <laughs> and I'm, I'm sure that's a good collaboration as well. All righty, as, uh, as far as now being the editor of the, uh, the Christian County Headliner, how has that, how has that changed your perspective on things? Um, well, <laughs> we've had a lot of changes just in the time I've been the editor. Um, you know, one thing that the pandemic brought about was that we closed our office on the downtown square in Ozark. So we're out of the building. Um, Pat Daly and I work out of our houses now and uh, do a lot of our collaborating virtually. And then, you know, when I need to go out and cover something or when he needs to go out and cover something, we go out and do it. But uh, the bulk of our work is done out of our home offices. So that is something that um, I never really thought would happen until it had to happen. You know, it was the move we needed to make 
in order to survive. Uh, you know, I'm still a big believer in newspapers, even though there was a time, you know, when I was 18 years old, I swore I would never work at one, but here we are. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I still believe, you know, a community needs a community-based newspaper. That's just, there are things that we cover that no one else does and, and no one else will cover. So if the paper were to go away, that's there's a lot of, uh, of spotlights being shown that uh, would go dark, and that's never a good thing. So, I mean, I'm hopeful just, you know, for the sake of my own employment, but also just for the sake of the community that I live in, that we're able to adapt and, and keep this thing going for a long time. Hallelujah. I'm really glad as a long, long, long time member of the media. Yeah. I'm glad to hear you say it. And Ranch, for us, for me, I'll just tell you, there's nothing better than to enjoy the writing, and your writing is very good. Why? We... Uh, I hate to even bring Perrier into here. But back <laughs> no, when no. Perrier was writing. I I apologize immensely, but <laughs> Perrier can really write, and I mean, you guys write. It you you tell the story. I mean, it is so good to just sit down and read about sports and the special highlights. And the, don't get me wrong, I I can barely put open an app on my phone. Occasionally, I get tweet stuff. My daughter tells me I can get on there, but I don't even know how to do that. So occasionally when I get tweets from <laughs> about the headliner, I just I have to go to your website. I'm, I, that's what I do. But anyway, uh, I I totally agree with you. I think the uh, what you allow for the added value for the community when you get up the next morning or you know the paper's coming on Thursday. I mean, it's just there's that anticipation. You can't replicate that in any other medium. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. Yeah, we, we love having the Show Me Collegiate League and U.S. Baseball Park and all of its amenities in our backyard in order to cover. Uh, I mean, what a tremendous asset that is for us. And there are a lot of uh, small-town newspapers that don't have collegiate baseball in their backyard to cover every summer. So, uh, you know, same deal with, with everything that's out at U.S. Baseball Park. I mean, you guys are, are hosting events, you know, 200-plus days out of the year, and yeah. Um, you know what a what a great asset, and I think uh, an underappreciated asset. Uh, well, US get baseball ready. Park we're putting in uh, we're putting in LED lighting in the entire facility, field concourse, and the fibers coming in. Uh-oh. The fibers Uh-oh. coming in, and we're renovating Uh-oh. the press box. It will be sweet. And that fiber will be double sweet. <laughs> well, yeah. Selfishly, I'm very excited about the fiber and, and what that's going to mean that we're able to do in the GRBL. Uh, but I think a lot of the players are going to be pumped up for those lights. And now, uh, I mean, when when errors happen or when when a ball gets dropped, we can say they just got brand new lights. What's your excuse? Yeah, I agree with you on that. Spoken <laughs> like a true journalist, right? <laughs> Ranch, thank you uh, very Thanks, much for Ranch. taking time to visit with us. Congratulations on all the great work you're doing, and and much much good luck with the hopefully with fingers crossed the uh, the coming baseball season. It'll be a lot of fun. Thanks, Ranch. Absolutely, Ned. Thanks for having me on and supporting the Headliner News and Grip and Rip Baseball.